Okay, so today's tutorial is pretty cool. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a really, really easy flaming sword animation in Blender. We're gonna be getting a free character on the internet um, via Adobe Mixmo. I'm gonna show you how to get all of that into Blender. It's not gonna cost you anything. And then I'm gonna take you through the process in um, of simulating this with quick effects. And then we're gonna be rendering it out um, after we created the materials in Eevee, we'll be rendering it out. So the only thing I'm not covering is just adding in this plane in, as a backdrop, but that's nothing, that's super simple. So the main thing we're focusing on here is getting this really cool flaming fire sword effect. And I will be uploading my files to Patreon, so let's jump into it. Okay, so you're gonna start by going to adobemixamo.com. I'm gonna put a link in the description, or you can just go to Google and type in www.mixamo, and it's free to create an account. Once you've signed in, all you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to characters, and you're gonna search through and you're gonna find one um, with a sword. And the one here is the Paladin Prop um, Nordstrom, this one here. So I've just clicked on it with the sword and it's loaded it into the browser here. And that's under the characters. And then you're gonna click on the animations and simply just go here to search and just type sword. And once you've typed that in, just press enter. And it's gonna come up with a whole bunch of these sword animations here. So the one we're gonna be looking for is um, this one right here. In fact, you could pick whichever one, but I went with the sword and shield idol, and I just clicked on that, because I thought that one just worked really well for this. And here you can see, it's loaded that onto the character. Then you're gonna go to download, and just gonna change this to 24 frames a second, because that's what Blender operates on at default. And make sure it's an FBX. And with all of that done, you're just gonna click download. It's gonna download an FBX with the name of the animation. Now I've already done that and I downloaded it to my desktop. So here you can see it's an FBX file called Sword and Shield Idle. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna now launch Blender. And once you're inside of Blender, uh, just select the default objects and delete them. And then you're gonna go to file, you're gonna go to import and then go to your FBX option for the import. And then in my case, like I said, I downloaded that thing from Adobe Mixamo at FBX to my desktop. So I'm just gonna find it here, sword and shield idle.fbx and go import FBX. And you know, so now you have your character imported and as well you have this rig. We can actually just select the rig and go M and just go new collection and just call it rig and go okay and just hide that. We don't really need it in the way. So all we have here are the mesh items. Make sure to save as well. I'm just gonna save mine to my desktop. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna select the sword over here because that's gonna be the smoke emitter, the fire emit emitter. And we don't want the whole thing to be um, emitting fire. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna tab into edit mode of that. And we're just gonna select the handle bit, all of this and go P and separate selection. And then tab back out. And now we just have this separate piece here. We're gonna click on that in the object mode, tab back in. Just come in here and go control R and just add in some more segments rolling them in and then tab back out. And now this thing over here, that is gonna be our smoke emitter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this sword. We're gonna make sure it's active and we're gonna go to object and we're gonna go down to quick effects and go quick smoke. And if we were now to actually play the animation by hitting spacebar, you can actually see this is already emitting some smoke in the viewport. Now what we're gonna be doing next is just giving it a little bit more with this domain. So just click on this domain tab into edit mode and just go S, X and scale it along the X just to give it some more volume and then S, Y and make it a little bit wider. Now, the bigger you make this, the more, um, the longer it'll take to render out the smoke. But um, just to make sure we don't have any sort of weird boxing in here, we're just gonna make it a little bit bigger. And you can see now we are ready to go. So it's cool that this is all in place. So with this bounding box selected, we're gonna actually with that selected go over to our physics and at this point, we can change some of our settings here. Um, but actually, just before we do that, let's just maybe first just select the sword, the emitter object first, and under the physics, let's just take the flow type under the settings and just make it fire plus smoke, because we are dealing with fire here. We're now gonna select the domain again, and we're gonna come here under the settings, and the main thing here we wanna look at is the resolution. The higher you make this, the better quality it's gonna be. Um, it's gonna have more resolution, but it's gonna cost you more. It's gonna take a lot more time to cache it out. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go over 120. Um, anything past 200, it'll look quite amazing, but you'll it'll take hours, maybe even days, depending on your computer. So I'm gonna go with 120 for my computer. I'd recommend if you have a weaker computer, maybe go with 80 or 90. 
Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and we're gonna enable the noise under the gas, just for now. And let's just also go down and come to the type here and change it to all instead of replay. Now, another thing we also wanna do is we wanna just bring our rig back real quick and just have a look at it, click on it. And you can see here the frame rate here, the amount of frames on that animation is 181. So let's just come to the end frame value and make it 181. And now we can select our domain again and under our fluids, if we just go all the way down to our cache, we're gonna make this 181 because it's 180 frames on a cache. And then we can also just click on this file here and just go to somewhere like your desktop, wherever you want. I'm just gonna create a new folder and I'm just gonna call it um, cache and just go accept for that folder. And now there's somewhere for this to cache out all of the necessary files. Oh yeah, and just quickly also is resumable. Um, so if you do stop it, you can resume the simulation. But once you have all of these things in place, just make sure to save. And with this domain, you're now gonna go ahead and you're gonna come and click on this button called bake all. And it's gonna bake this into that selected file. So go ahead and click it. Okay, so it's now done caching all that out to that file. And you can see here, um, I'll drag through it. I'm not gonna play it in real time um, because it can be quite slow, but you can see here we, we have the simulation and it's looking pretty good. So um, what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna now start doing some of our rendering with the fire. I'm gonna show you how to use the volumetric material. Now you could do this in cycles, but um, it really takes a long time to render volumetrics in cycles and the denoising isn't that great. So we're gonna be working with EV. So go up to your render engine, make sure it's EV, which it should be by default. You're gonna enable ambient occlusion and then screen space reflections. Make sure to enable that. And another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to your volumetrics and you're gonna to wanna to make sure to set the tile size to two pixels. Because um, if you render it and it was at like 16 or 18, you'd see it looks very chunky. So set that all the way to a small so it'll go, which is two pixels. And you can increase the sample amount here. So that's the render samples to about 100, which should be fine. And I'm also just gonna hide that rig. We don't really need to see that. So here we have our simulations. So let's go into our front view and let's just go Shift A. And let's just go to lighting and add in an area light and go G, move it over and an R to rotate it in towards the subject. And let's just go Z and go rendered. And we can see we need a lot more strength in that light. So let's go to our light settings and go make it 150. And now we can see things a little bit better. I'm gonna to go to my top view and go Shift D to duplicate and I'm gonna duplicate another one and just bringing it in forward towards the subject. So now we can see it's nicely lit. I'm also just gonna to go to my world settings and I'm gonna make the um, environment much darker so we get some more contrast. Now this isn't looking like fire at the moment, so we're gonna deal with that. So let's just select that um, domain. We actually wanna select the domain because that is the smoke itself. And let's go over to our shading workspace. And uh, you can see here by default, it already has this set up for us, which is really cool. And down here, it's using um, an attribute. And by default, it should have the attribute set to temperature for us. Um, you can usually type things in here like flame or temperature, whatever attributes are generated by the smoke simulation, but we won't get into that sort of stuff today. Let's just leave everything as it is, because um, it's all in place for us. Um, it should also be going into the volumetric, which it is by default, which is really good. Now, if you want to see this, make sure to go Z and then go rendered. And what you're going to want to do is come here to the emission color and change that to something like this. And if you want to start seeing it, you have to increase this black body intensity. So I'm going to go with something like nine. I'm just going to type it in. And here you can see we're starting to see the fire. You also want to come to the temperature and let's just increase that to 2000. Um, that might be too strong. So I'm going to just take it down to 900, but I'm going to inc increase the block, um, black body intensity. Um, you can also just type it in because you can't really drag it past a certain point. So I'm just going to type in 12 in this case looks okay. You also want to come here to the density of um, your smoke and you can change this to a higher amount if you want it to be denser. I'm going to go lower. I'm going to go with something like free maybe. And I'm going to change the color to something a little bit darker. And that's it. At this point, um, you now have a nice fire simulation. Um, but if you want to um, render this out, you're going to now go and add in a camera. And I'm just going to add one in 
at the front here and maybe offset a little bit like so. And I like to go under the camera settings and make the focal length a little bit higher like this. It's just something I really like, that sort of shallow view. And I'm just gonna place it about here. And I'm gonna go Z, I'm gonna go rendered. And I'm just gonna quickly go Shift A, just add in a point light. And I'm gonna add some of these point lights just behind the subject here, looking uh, behind the camera. So maybe make that 40 and increase the radius a little bit. So what that's gonna do is kind of give it some um, rim lighting here. And I like to kind of go with a bit of more of a bluish color at the back. And then you can go Shift D and duplicate that. And just duplicating it and placing it behind the subject just so we get that nice rim lighting effect. This is absolutely, just makes such a difference. And then we just duplicate one and place it in front of our subject here. But this one, we're gonna make a nice orange kind of color. Just to kind of make it look like that fire is glowing on our subject. And that's it. And now you can just go and go to render. Actually enable also, just go to your render settings and enable motion blur as well. That's gonna really make things look cool. And then go render and render image. And let's see what this looks like. And there you can see we have a rendered shot. Now, if you render this in cycles, it'll look a little bit nicer, but uh, it's gonna take a lot longer to render. But um, what I'm gonna show you now how to do is also render this out as an animation. So what you can do is go to your output settings and then go to your output folder and select somewhere on your computer. And then you can come here to the file format and make it FFmpeg video. And under your encoding, you can come to your container and make it an MP4 and then make sure to save. And now if you go render and you render animation, it's gonna render this animation out for you. But I'll quickly show you guys my original. And with my original, I just did a bit of a different camera angle and I kind of animated the camera. Um, but overall, it's the exact same thing. I just also added in just a floor and I added in a checkered material to it. Just kind of like the, the default UV tile that comes with Blender. Um, and I just placed it as a background. And that was it. It's the exact same thing you're looking at. And you can see um, messing around with the lighting is really what kind of makes or breaks things sometimes. But this was my result that you're seeing here. And this is the one I'll be uploading to my Patreon. But the overall effect of making a flaming sword in a very basic way has been introduced to you today in this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked it, please subscribe. Check out some of my other content. It really helps me out a lot. And I'll see you guys next time.